Welcome to McDougal. On this show, you have a choice. Eat smart or eat stupid. Author Cheryl Townsley has an opinion. Hello, I'm Wayne Judd, and now that dragon slayer of medical myths, Dr. John. Slaying medical myths, huh? Yeah, Dragon Slayer, that's a kind of a, there's a little gallantry that attaches to that. Let's take the big five. Lancelot, okay. uh, all of those characters. Yes, go ahead. The big five. The big five of, the big of, five. of nutritional myths. All right. Starches make you fat. Starches make you fat. Yep. Everybody knows that, Everybody right? knows that. How come, how come when you look around the world when people live on high starch diets, they're always thin? How come when you look up in a nutritional handbook, the calorie content of a potato, you find out that a large potato is 150 calories. And you'd be lucky if you could eat uh, 10 large potatoes a day. That's, that's 1, true. 1,500 calories of, uh, it just makes no sense at all. Okay. And people who go on high starch diets end up getting very thin. Why do you think they say starches make you fat? Well, that's what I was going to ask you. Probably because I'll bet I know. I bet they put all sorts of fat stuff on starches to ruin Sour them. cream, bacon bits. Am I right about that? That's right. Throw a couple, a couple of uh, cups of olive oil and spaghetti sauce. That's mm. how starches make Sounds you, wonderful. Make you fat. <laughs> That's another myth, the idea that fat tastes good. If I had a bottle of olive oil or a cup of lard sitting here, would you drink it for me? Not at all, not a chance. Not a chance. No. It's disgusting. When you get, when you get uh, grease and oil on your, on your hands, what do you do? Well, you try to get it off. What do they call a restaurant with a bad reputation? Greasy spoon. There you go. This guy learns fast. So, grease is really disgusting. That's a myth that grease I threw, is disgusting. Uh, an extra myth I threw in just for you, Wayne. Uh, how about uh, the idea that you need uh, meat to get protein? Oh, yes. Yes, I hear all the time that meat is good for you. You can't make it without meat. In fact, meat. You, you, how, you can't get protein from vegetables, they That's tell right. us. Well, it's then, one of your basic food groups. <clears throat> then my, my question to you is how do we grow elephants, hippopotamuses, giraffes? When they only eat vegetables, where do they get their protein from muscles? Well, there you are. From plants. The truth of the matter is, is that vegetable foods are loaded with protein. They have uh, far in excess of any protein needs that any human being would, re would require. How about the idea that you can, need... Can you, can you wait a minute? Give me an example, because I, I don't want you just to say that without telling me what vegetables okay. will give me protein. Okay, let's, let's give you an example. Experimental studies on protein showed that the human being needs 2.5% of their calories as protein. The World Health Organization okay. doubled that and said, of your whole diet, 5% of the calories need to come from protein. Okay. Uh, uh, rice is 8% protein. Uh, potatoes are 11 percent protein. Whole wheat bread is 14 percent protein. So even those foods, you don't have to eat soybeans and you can no, even get your protein. No, it's impossible to design, design a protein. See, I expected you to say soybeans because that's what I always right, hear. Right. Soybeans then, give me gas. But then I don't you get into the you. problem, <laughs> then all beans give you gas. All beans do. Yes. Then you get into the problem of excess protein. And you see, when you believe something that's incorrect, you get into serious trouble. When you consume excess protein, what it does is it, uh, it has to be it has to be dealt with, all right? The body okay. takes in protein, utilizes some of it to build a few hormones, repair a few cells, and then the excess has to be dispensed with, as with any nutrient. There are two possibilities. You can take an excess of a nutrient and you can store it as we do the fat that we eat. We store it in our body fat. Right. Or you can eliminate it from the body. Now, Wayne, this is a tough question, but think about it seriously. All right. If we were going to store protein in our body, the excess protein, where would it be stored, most likely? Uh, in the tissue? In the muscles. Okay. And consider, Close. considering the number of chickens and cows and pigs and excess and, and high protein foods that you and I have eaten all our life, yes. if, it stored, if it were stored in the muscles and we took off our jackets and showed our bodies to the audience, who would they be looking at? Arnold Schwarzenegger. Of course. That's right. And Sylvester oh, Stallone. I like we're, that. We're not going to give them the thrill today. <laughs> Sorry, folks. All right. The truth of the matter is protein is not stored in the body. Protein is excreted from the body through the kidneys. And in the process, you, t you cause wear and tear on the kidneys and it actually destroys kidney tissue. It's hard on, too much protein is hard on kidneys? Hard on kidneys. In fact, all patients who have uh, kidney failure are put on low protein diets. Every doctor in the country would do that because you don't want to, you don't want to further wear out those kidneys. But one of the more important things that happens with this high protein load we take in every day is it causes the bones to dissolve and it washes the bones through the kidneys. And as a consequence, we get a disease called osteoporosis. And that disease begins with the nature of protein. Protein is made of amino acids. You probably right. heard that, amino right. acids. Right. Well, these, acids present, these amino acids present an acid load to the body every day. And the body must protect its acid-base balance, and so it dissolves the bones to neutralize this acid. 
And then what happens is all this protein that we eat causes the kidney physiology to change and causes the body to excrete tremendous amounts of calcium through the kidneys. So out of the we're, body. we're ruining our bones and we're ruining our kidneys when we eat too and much also protein. it's hard on the liver. And the liver. Yes, but Americans don't believe that. And as a consequence, we have one of the highest incidences of osteoporosis in the world. And where osteoporosis is rare to non-existent is in countries uh, where they eat low protein diets, like in China or rural Japan or in African countries. And now you move the Asian or the African to the United States, you feed them the high protein diet and voila, they get osteoporosis. There's a couple of the Amazing. myths that the dragon slayer is taking care of for Amazing. you. Amazing. Well, we'll do more. I we like will that. do more. I like it. And uh, stay tuned. We're going to be doing an interview on vegetarianism with Cheryl Townsend. We'll be right back. I learn English, you can also, on Hello Channel. And welcome back. With me is Cheryl Townsley. She's the author of uh, Food Smart, Eat Your Way to Better Health. That's a very seductive title, Eat Your Way to Better Health. People love to eat, and uh, if you can get better health by eating well. I, no I notice there's no meat on there, is there, on your cover, Cheryl? Well, oh, that's because it's back. a good The meat cover. is on the back. You put it on the inside. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> this is the vegetarian, vegetarian cookbook? Uh, actually, it's not a cookbook. What it does is it goes through and talks about my crash by eating the American diet and learning what to do about it and how to deal with the stressful lifestyle that also went along with that lousy diet and what to do to get healthy. Do you think that the lousy diet uh, encouraged the stressful lifestyle or made it more difficult for you to handle that stressful lifestyle? Absolutely. Uh, I was a corporate executive in the fast track, flying all over the country in the computer arena. And so my diet was in the five-star restaurants, a lot of fat, a airplane lot of food. dairy, airplane food, which is horrible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then a lot of stress, because when you're in sales, you have to close the next deal. So there was always that push to close the next deal. And That's right. exercise is trying to catch the next airplane. And, and so, but I was one of those people that I was never sick, because it was never in my daytimer to have a sick day. So I pushed and pushed and pushed, and I assumed I was healthy. Well, you because... said you crashed. I mean, what, what does a crash mean to you? Well, a crash means that after a difficult pregnancy, which I was in bed for seven months, and I thought, well, I'll get over that and I'll be fine. But after the pregnancy, I had a lot of weight gain, mm. a lot of skin problems, a lot of emotional, mental problems that eventually led to suicide, unemployment. That's a crash. And also went through, because of the unemployment, a financial crash, bankruptcy. Um, so there was major stress, wow. major crash. It was a pit. Not fun. And uh, you think that uh, taking care of your nutrition would have made a difference, but there's obviously other things that you think are important. Well, I'd gone to doctors at this point of the crash, and they said there was nothing medically wrong. It was probably all in my head. And that was pretty frustrating to hear, and it's very hopeless, because then the psychiatrist only wanted to medicate, so that wasn't very encouraging. Finally found a nutritionist, and I went in very skeptical, because I was a home economist, and I knew the basic four food group. <laughs> and so I thought this is going to be a fruit and fairy type person, and I was very cautious. And so I went in barbed with a lot of skepticism, and what was he going to tell me that I didn't know? And so I asked lots of questions. For example, I asked him, well, my right knee is always swelling, and I've had the the fluid drain and it keeps coming back. So what do you think causes that? I was pretty antsy. Uh -huh. And he said, well, that's real simple. Everything below the waist on the right-hand side is related to the liver and gallbladder. And I thought, well, that's interesting. My mother had her gallbladder out and I've had a lot of gallstone problems. Later, I did a gallstone liver flush, passed over 100 gallstones, and I have my liver today and I have my gallbladder. And so I learned that a lot of the things he said made sense to the whole body. And as we started changing my diet, my health started turning around. And what did he do to your diet? What kind of change did he make? Well, the first thing we did is we went through a cleansing process. And I liken that, that when you move into a new house and the previous tenant left a lot of trash, you don't move in a lot of your good stuff until you've cleaned out the old. Mm -hmm. And so we did a cleanse. And we okay. started cleaning out the toxins that I had built up over 30-some years. And then we started adding good well, nutrition. Tell us what that involves. The well, cleanse. How do you clean? Because there are all kinds of cleansing programs that I've heard about. And I'd like to hear what yours well, the cleansing is just like cleaning house. You can do surface cleaning, you can do weekly mm -hmm. cleaning, or a deep cleanse. Well, I was in a pit, so I needed a deep cleanse. All right, what'd they do? So I did raw fruits and vegetables. I did some juicing and some very basic, real simple 
supplementation, not very much that we so primarily kind of put did. So good things in to clean right. you out. A lot of good water, pure water, mm -hmm. and a lot of fruits and vegetables. And we did very simple ones in the beginning so we could spot if I had any food allergies, which <laughs> I did. And what was interesting to me is that the food allergies for me didn't show up in skin rashes and asthma, it showed up in emotional problems. So mm -hmm. when I eat foods that I'm allergic to, I either get very depressed or really angry at how stupid you are today. I mean, it's an immediate excessive reaction. Cheryl, you mentioned pure water. Mm -hmm. We haven't talked much about water here. How important is water in the diet? Well, when you consider that approximately 70% of your body is water and the brain is even more water, then water plays a very important part in the body. It's in important for the skin, for mental clarity, for toxins to be moved through the body. It's, it's critical. Tap water is good? Tap water? Oh, not unless you want to die. <laughs> you have a recommendation of how much water you, you drink? Well, one of the things I did in Food Smart, if people want to be real exact, based on your weight, you can calculate. But for most people, 8 to 10 glasses a day. Do you think the thirst drive uh, is inaccurate, doesn't take good care of the body as far as water needs? It didn't for me because I was never thirsty because that mm -hmm. was an annoyance. I mean, I had to take time to go drink something. And so I just, I learned to suppress it. So just you really weren't, weren't listening to your thirst drive? Oh, I didn't at all. So I had to learn to drink water, and so I carry water with me all the time to remind myself that I have to drink that much during the day. So clean water, obviously. I mean, right. no one would argue with that. Clean right. air, clean right. food. Right. And uh, once you had the cleansing process done, then what kind of a diet did the nutritionist recommend for you, or did you decide that was best? Well, one of the things as I got cleaned out, one of the things I learned is that my body would tell me what mm -hmm. it wanted and what it didn't want versus cravings. What happens which... when my body says, I want pepperoni pizza? Should That's I a craving. Oh. <laughs> and the cleaner you get, we were talking about this before the show, when you start getting away from all that lousy food, the, you know, the high meats, a lot of dairy, a lot of the fat, the refined and processed foods, and you get rid of that and during a cleansing process eat the foods that really nourish you, right. it's true. then you try and go back. My husband used to love glazed donuts. He used to go to the bank every Saturday to get a pile <laughs> of glazed donuts. And at this point, if somebody sets that in front of me, the smell is so atrocious that the thought of putting that in it's my true. body... It's true. It's oh. absolutely true. And I've only been doing this for a couple of months now. It's just amazing it, it how, how uh, horrible you don't these like other that foods... I can't huh? bear the thought well, of... Well, on an airplane, some of the food they bring out and the smell that comes with it, it's yeah. really disgusting. It's really not food, is it? It's something else. No, it's, it's chemicals, processed right, right, stuff. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and one of the analogies I give in, in classes is if I go out and plant an apple seed, I'm going to get an apple. But if I go out and plant a Twinkie or something else comparable to that, <laughs> I get a toxic waste dump. And that's, and in our bodies we do that. We put all this food in there at 98.6 yes. degrees, which if we did that in our kitchen trash can and let it set at 98 degrees for a mm. couple of days, it would stink. So in America, we put this in, let it set for 98 degrees, mm. and then we wonder why we stink. But we don't deal with the food and the, and the trash dump. We put on more deodorants. We put on more perfumes yes. because Madison and Fifth mm. Avenue have said that's what we need. Instead of looking at the trash dump and saying, well, maybe we need to empty the trash this Amazing. week. <laughs> well, that's a very, very vivid explanation, Cheryl. I think you have our interest, to say the least. Uh, Cheryl Townsley, the book is uh, Food Smart and uh, it teaches you how to get a clean body and better health. How about some cooking? Can we do some of that? Well, it's all proof in the pudding. If it doesn't taste good and look good, nobody will eat it. let's go do some cooking. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thanks for watching Hello Channel. Learn the language of the internet, travel, commerce, and diplomacy. Watch Hello Channel and learn English. Do it for yourself. And welcome back. We're with Cheryl Townsley, the author of Food Smart, but uh, she has another book that takes us through the kitchen. It's uh, Lifestyle for Health. It's uh, Smart Cooking busy people and that of course is uh, something that addresses most of us. Cheryl, you um, talk about clean food and clean cooking and that starts with a washing process? Well I do, I talk about that in both the cookbook and in Food Smart and a lot of people what they'll do when they bring this home from the grocery store is they'll just run it under a little bit of water and and then 
chop it up and think it's ready oh, to eat? That's exactly what we well, do. Well, we assume it's it's properly taken care of by the supermarket. Why should you do anything else? Well, right. they've handled it, and there's mm -hmm. extra dirt, and there's oil-based pesticides that the water just rolls right off. So what I do when I come home with these big bags of produce, because that's 70% of our diet, is I'll fill the sink full of water, and I'll add a vegetable cleaner. Shackley has basic H. There's a lot of other cleaners. And I put just a few drops of that in there and put my produce in there, even lettuce, because a lot of people think you can't do that with lettuce. I'll put my greens in there, and I'll let it soak for 10 to 20 minutes, and then I'll set it out in my dish drain for the water to come out. A, a vegetable cleaner? There's such a thing as a vegetable cleaner? There's Made all clean kinds vegetables. of vegetable cleaners, but you're going to pay premium price for those. So if you work with something like a biodegradable cleaner like a Shackley Basic H or an Amway LOC, those are much cheaper okay. and they'll work fine. And then you rinse it off, put it in there, you spin your lettuce dry. And what I have found is that the produce will last longer in the refrigerator. I don't have as much spoilage and it tastes a lot fresher. You'll really notice a difference on grapes because that's one of the most sprayed fruits on the market. So you so you actually soak them in that solution? Right in there in the sink, right in there in for the water. For 10 minutes? 10, 20 minutes. And then you rinse them all off? Rinse them off. And, and, the, and the cleaner isn't worse than the pesticides? Oh, no, no, no. Okay. That's something that's not harmful sure. at all to the body. Good. Well, the foods you have over here for the recipe we're going to make, those really wouldn't be cleaned foods, would they? Most of them. I mean, you might do the pepper that you have. The pepper I would have done, yes. and the tomato I would have done. Uh, the rest of it is the corn was frozen. It wasn't fresh. If it had right. been fresh corn, I would have done it. The rice and the you beans, I wouldn't really have done do it. That. But, but just having these kinds of foods, because they're low on the food chain, are going to be very low in environmental con contaminants. Right. They're going to be much less than the meats and the Tremendously. Dirt. Hundreds much of fold less. lower. So you're starting off really well on the pesticide issue, just be eating very low on the food chain right. with your grains and fruits Good and point. vegetables. One of the big problems, uh, those of us who convert, which I have, is what do you eat? What can you eat? My wife says over and over again, what shall I cook for you? What shall we make? Well, that was interesting when we worked with our nutritionist. He said we could have these fruits and vegetables, and I said, well, like, what are we supposed to do with this? Right, right. <laughs> a whole week of this stuff? <laughs> what am I going to do, fast? <laughs> you know, I was really like, discouraged. It's not like real food. No. If you're eating all the, other, the American diet, <laughs> it's not that real because food. because you were unfamiliar? Oh, I was unfamiliar, I was uneducated, and I planned a meal based on what was going to be the meat. On the, right. That was how I was taught as a home economist. You picked your meat, and then you put side dishes with the meat. Of course. Now, all of a sudden, these side dishes are supposed to be mm -hmm. my main and dish. So what do you think about in terms of the center of the meal now? Oh, well, I pick either beans or vegetables. So you pick a starch? A grain or a vegetable, a and that's vegetable. my main dish. And what's so neat about when you start adding these kinds of foods together, what we're making is a black bean and corn salad, and this is rice with some cumin mixed in because I started understanding seasonings and herbs and how much more flavor that can bring out. That, that green stuff on top was cumin? Cumin. That's what goes into a lot of Mexican food. How do you food. spell that? C-U-M-I-N. C-U-M-I-N. Okay. Or for the illiterate, it's the cumin oh. herb. I guess I've this heard of cumin, cumin all right. <laughs> <laughs> and then what's, the other thing that's neat about this is the color. And in processed foods, the only way color is added is with food coloring number five, number six, number two. Well, we don't have to do that when you're using whole natural food. Incidentally, are food colorings dangerous or bad for you? Well, if you want to die early. That would do it. That would do it. Okay. okay, and so we added some black beans, and in there I give directions if you want to cook it from scratch, but if you don't, there are some canned varieties that are, that are better. Okay, now you could stop right here with the rice and beans. Uh, and then be people, wonderful. And then, yes, but then people could pick the various fruits and vegetables they like, so right. you know, this may be a, a kind of a foundation, and then if they want something green, they could add green peppers or green onions. and. It, the variation is right. limitless, isn't right. it? And yeah. the thing is that I've done with my recipes is I've made them so simple that if you leave out an ingredient or two, it's not a problem. We're going to add some tomatoes. And if you don't like tomatoes, leave them out. Some people can't do tomatoes because some people have joint problems after eating it. If you add some red peppers, or you could add green peppers That's to add more That's a lot of red color. peppers. So and, we won't add that many. And the we'll same thing with the out. spice cumin, you, uh, you could add uh, cilantro or any other spice oh, that definitely. you want to. And so people really need to focus on what spices they like. Well, so you learn what you taste. like. Yeah. And I've worked on recipes being allowing people to vary it based on what they like. Mm -hmm. And then yellow corn, you could do white corn. This is the most colorful, flavorful, interesting it's kind of it's eating there is. Beautiful. I mean, contrast with that with yellow and brown food, which is the American diet. The taste what, of grease and these, salt. Look how colorful chips. this is. Aren't these chips supposed? Aren't they, these greasy? What? Did they taste greasy? No, they really don't. Those are baked instead of fried, and so it gives. What's nice with that when you put that in a lettuce-lined bowl or on a tray, we'll bring out our finished one here. And see, this is colorful. 
It's nutritious, and we've added just a slight, uh, that's a non-fat vinaigrette for a little bit of flavoring. The chips are baked, so you get the crunch, you get the, the variation in texture and in crunch with the smooth. And that's something that's very easy. And what's nice about food like this is you can eat as much as you want. It's like mm -hmm. you keep eating and keep eating, but you never get that stuffed feeling that you might have gotten after a traditional Thanksgiving mm -hmm. dinner. Where you and feel tell like them how much cholesterol is in this. There's none. And how much fat? It's very low fat, it's under 10%. And the carbohydrate and dietary fiber? Is very high because of the beans, the so whole grain all rice. All the things you're looking for. And, just, and also they should have noticed that this is simple enough that Wayne and I could make it. And that's my style of cooking. Absolutely. Can I try a little bit of this? Sure, help that's yourself. Great. And we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> My name is Alan, and you're watching Hello Channel. And welcome back. With this, is Cheryl Townsley. Her book, Food Smart, and uh, she also has a cookbook called Lifestyle for Health. We have a, a real deal for you. We have her newsletter, Lifestyle for Health, and you can write us. The address is coming up, and you can get a free copy of this. When people try to make dietary and lifestyle changes, do you have recommendations to get them going and to get them excited about it? Right, I really do, because if people don't, there's only two reasons people change. Either the cost of their problem is so great they don't want to stay there, or the value of the change is so important to them they want to go towards it. Mm -hmm. And so I try to help people understand the cost of being sick that we have just come to take for granted and not feel good, and to start to help them understand what it's like to feel good in the morning. They have an option, don't they? That's right. People and only, can get control of their health, can't they? They're the only one who can do yeah. it. Nobody yeah. else can do it for them. They're the general of this process of getting healthy. Yeah, I know. I think that's the most important thing for them to start out is to realize how much power they have. And all they have to do is get a simple set of rules that says eat delicious food. And it is delicious. This is good stuff. <laughs> yes. I think I'll have another. Well, it gets them out of this victim mode that somebody mm. has to do it for them and that they're destined to be sick by right. the time they're 40, 50, or 60. Yeah. It's just not it's true. It's not like you have to add a new activity to your day either. you got to eat anyway. You might right. as well just pick good things, right? But it's educating yourself because yeah. we're, we're raised a certain way and we don't know better. And so people need to be educated, but they need to understand that it can be easy, that it can be affordable, and it doesn't have to take a right. lot of time. Right. And you're out there helping them. Get a right. good message. You look great. You look the part. Thanks. And that's really important. Got to walk the talk. Well, thank you, Cheryl Townsley. That was really great information. Thanks. And please join us next time.